So if any of you guys out there are interested in mixing in surround and you've cobbled together your little 7.1.4 rig, um, you might be interested to know about these two plugins that um, offer room correction. Um, we have Sonarworks are now doing a multi-channel plugin and so is Dirac. Um, I'm using the AAX version of the plugin. Um, how much are they? So the Sound ID reference multi-channel is going for 500 euros. And the multi-channel room correction suite from Dirac is $499. But both at the moment are offering a free trial, which is brilliant. So we can get to um, give them a spin. And I figured out a way that I can even simply A to B them all. So after you've installed everything, um, these are the two apps that you start off doing your room correction measurements with. Um, I found it very, very useful just to get all my delay times, at least, um, and for checking the volume levels, so I was able to calibrate as much as I could at the source, um, and that's including using the dip switches to change the tone control to the Genlex to get everything at the same volume and tone matched as much as I could before I started. Once everything's installed, these are the two apps that run. You can press the calibrate button when you're in the AX plugin within Pro Tools, but I don't suggest you do that. You really want to run it from this standalone. And now, like in Sonarworks, we can create a new speaker profile. And now we can choose what type of system we have. Now, unfortunately, Pro Tools is only 7.1.2 native on its buses. Uh, I don't know why it's like that. I think logic is the same. Let me know what your door's like. So for this test, I did measurements for 7.1.2. And the Dirac Live, when you press the calibrate button, it will actually launch the Dirac Live suite. And it connects to the processor. I don't have my mic connected for now. Let's just choose that. And now we have the multi surround Dirac. So I won't bore you with all the actual measurements, but I will say that uh, Dirac Live, you can't do a 7.1.4 sweep, measure it and make the profiles, um, and then change to another bus. So that for this test, I wanted to use 7.1.2. Uh, I had to do the whole measurement again um to come into this slot so i can see it and load it up sonarworks on the other hand didn't mind me um down mixing like that at all and here is the sonarworks plugin it took quite a bit to um level match them actually because the sound id reference is always down minus 8.16 so i had to adjust the buses to compensate for that when I'm doing a surround mix, I actually like to take complete control of the bass management. So I make myself an LFE sub-channel and I low pass that at about 85 hertz. Um, everything else goes through um, a high pass at 85 hertz. Um, and in this case, the tracks we're using to send to all the speakers and I'm using the same channel place in every speaker because I'm really interested to hear in tone and the actual coherence of the delay times and then it comes out of this bus into a clean channel into a sonar and into the Dirac plugin and for a test I thought it'd be fun to see if I can record what's going on so I've set up a mid side microphone strange combination with a broad roadcaster on the mid and using a four and four and figure of eight on the sides um, to see if I can capture what I hear. So um, we'll give that a go and I'll tell you what I heard for real in the room after.
So take that all with a big grain of salt. Um, you can still hear that there's quite a dramatic change with the sonar works. Um, and the Dirac on the recording sounded a little bit phasey, which it doesn't really sound like in the room. Um, both did a good job of kind of reining in the bass frequencies. And if the Dirac responds to my request for educational discount, I think my money would be on the Dirac. And for stereo use normally, I actually ha run the Mini DSP SHD, which runs Dirac software. But this actually did cause me another problem, because when I first started with the Sonar Works, I had to go and buy a £72 microphone. That actually is not that bad. When I first started taking measurements, I forgot my Dirac was uh, in place. It has about 14 milliseconds delay time. So Sonar Works was thinking that my fronts were like really far away. It was uh, quite funny until I realized what was going on. Um, but that actually generated another problem for me because the SHD doesn't have a true bypass. It's a software bypass. And if you saw my last video, I measured the DDRC24 to have a longer delay time in bypass mode. I haven't measured this unit. Um, so, as luck would have it, I'd recently designed this saturation unit uh, based around the Korg new tubes. And after I'd made it, I soon realized that I wanted a true bypass on relay. So I designed a little PCB that would make that happen. And I was able to use that same PCB and put it in line with the SHD. Here you can see it in a box. Um, it, I didn't have to spend any money. I had everything. I uh, just needed to order a Chinese uh, to make the dream come true. And the great thing is, because I was so OCD about making sure there was no noise when it was active, I designed the circuit to be normally on. Uh, and then when you press the bypass button, it would energize the relays and go into bypass mode. So this paid off dividends with this because now I have all my surround speakers on one switch. And when I turn that power on, it energizes the relay and bypasses the SHD. So um, that's totally out of the equation. And just a little note about the microphones. I went and bought the... Um, sound ID reference mic to do the sonar measurements. This has an analog output, and I believe Sonar Works uh, wants to do everything at 44.1 kilohertz. I might be wrong on that, but that's what I found with a bit of research online. Um, the Dirac, I already had this one for use with the SHD. This is a USB microphone, and this one's at 48 kilohertz. And I didn't have any luck running this with the Sonar software. So I hope that helps you in some way. Oh, I'll just say one other thing. When I had a track uh, fully in surround, um, fully going, I found that the sonar plugin, I had to have at least 64 samples buffer, whereas the Dirac software was still allowing me to run everything at 32. And because I'm running all analog, I really need to be running 32 sample buffer. Anyway, I hope uh, some of that helps. I'll uh, catch you next time.